In this video, I'd like to show how to make box joints using the Subtract tool in SketchUp. The Subtract tool is available when you customize the toolbar. Down in here, you can see Intersect, Union, Subtract, and Trim. And Basically, this is the Subtract tool, and what I've done is added the Subtract tool to my toolbar up here. You can also find the Subtract tool using the View menu, View Tool Palettes Solid Tools, which brings up the Solid Tool Palette, and the Subtract tool is this one here. To begin with, we don't need this figure, so we'll delete it. And to start drawing the first board, it's going to be the side of a drawer or a box or something. We'll use the rectangle tool, which is R for the shortcut. We'll start at the origin. And we'll start to drag out a one by board. And I'd like to make this 24 inches long, so without clicking the mouse the second time, I'll just type 24, 0.75, or you could type 3 slash 4, and that'll give me the outline of a one by, a two foot long one by. And we'll take the push pull tool and click there once and drag up and then without clicking the mouse again I'm going to type 5.5 .5 for five and a half inches and that's going to be the basic shape of the drawer side. Now I'm selecting the space bar to get the select and using the mouse wheel to scroll in and you can use the middle mouse to, to orbit around if you hold it down and move the mouse it'll orbit. Just to get a closer view I'd like to get an idea of what size and how many fingers. So I'll left click on this edge once to select it and I'll right click and I'll choose divide. And divide will bring up the dots and it'll show us what it means to divide that edge. What I'd like to do is find an odd number of segments and that just makes it so that if there's a finger on the top there will be a finger on the bottom of the box joint on the same board. And so this shows us that seven segments is about 13 sixteenths and nine segments is about 5 eighths. Now notice that little approximately 5 eighths. That's because it doesn't divide out evenly and we're gonna address that later. Just remember that for nine segments, the length is about 5 eighths. So now press escape to get out of that because we don't really wanna divide that. What we wanna do next is draw a couple construction lines. So we use the tape measure tool T, click on this edge and drop down. 5 eighths was the dimension for the fingers that we've chosen. So we'll type in 5 slash 8 enter and then in for the other direction we want to come back three quarters along the red axis using the tape measure tool and set a construction line again typing 0.75 or 3 slash 4. And so this gives us the basic starting of our fingers. So we'll now go to the line tool which is L and we'll start here. Click once, move over, find the intersection, click again. Start to move down on the blue axis, type 5 slash 8 again into the length box and then move along the red axis, no, yep, move along the red axis, back to the edge and click to complete that. And so now we've got our first shape to help make these fingers. So we'll go to the eraser tool, we'll get rid of this construction line and get rid of that construction line. And now what we're going to do is click the space bar. And we're going to select these three lines that we've drawn. So select the first one, hold down shift, select the second one, hold down shift, and select the third one, hold down shift. And now we'll move these with a copy, so we use the M tool and press Alt or Option, click the corner of those three, and move down along the blue. Now the distance we want to move isn't 5 eighths, because that, that doesn't leave us a pin, so we actually want to move twice that distance, which is 10 eighths. So in the length box, just type 10 divided by 8 and enter, and that gives us the exactly 5 eighths down from the previous hole. And we're going to have about four of these, so before you do anything else, type 4x and enter, and now you get four. And it looks like we actually did one too many. You could have typed 3x. But this is the general idea. So now we can take the eraser tool and erase this if you happen to draw that, and go back to the space bar. And now, if you look closely, you'll see using the tape measure that from this bottom finger to the edge of the board is a half inch. Press T again, and from the top finger to the top edge is 5 eighths of an inch. So there's a 1 eighth inch difference. One of them's it's basically offset one eighth of an inch. So click the space bar. We're going to select these lines and we're going to move them. So first of all, start in the upper left, hold down the mouse and drag and just include everything we've just drawn. Now it will select that right edge, but I don't think that's going to matter. So now we want to move and we don't want to copy this time. So just use the M tool, click on the end point and start to move up along the blue axis. Now remember there was one eighth inch difference. So if we split that in half, we get one sixteenth and that's how far we want to move these. So type 1 slash 16 into the length box, and now that moved them 1 16th of an inch. So if we use the tape measure tool to double check and go from this end point to that edge, it's 9 sixteenths. Press T again, come down here, go from this vertex to that edge, and it's 9 sixteenths. So even though the fingers on the top and bottom are a different size than the ones in the middle, they're centered. Use the space bar to go back to select, click outside the box, 
use the push pull tool, which is P, push on this center finger and push it all the way back and it'll disappear. And now on the, the rest of them, instead of moving it, just double click. One, two, three. So we'll make a component out of this. We'll triple click this. We'll type G to make component. And I'm just going to call it sideboard. In the outliner, we gained a sideboard here. And in the component window, we have a sideboard. So now we need to draw the board across the back of the joint. And the way I'll do that is start with the rectangle tool, start at this point, and start dragging out a rectangle along the green axis. And again, we can use the dimension box. And what we want to do, I'm just going to make this 12 inches, so 12 comma 0.75. That'll give us a 12 inch one by. Use the push pull tool, and let's orbit around here, and push the push pull tool, and grab that edge, click that edge, and come up to this top edge on the other board, and press enter. So that's our backboard. And on this one, we can triple click it, and use G for component, and here it doesn't really matter what we call it. Um, I'll just leave it as the default. And now to do the subtraction. So leave this, leave this board selected, use the move tool, select this outside edge and start moving it along until it snaps to the outside edge of the previous board. This board we've just added is it has no cuts in it. So we want to do the subtraction. So we want to basically subtract the board on the left from the board on the right. And that'll clear out the spaces necessary in the board on the right. So first select the board on the left, hold down shift, select the board on the right, and then go up to your subtract tool and press subtract. And now you can see that it, it instantly made the other half of the box joint. So if you click on sideboard, it'll attach a sideboard to your mouse. And it's fortunate because we started at the origin, we can just snap this to the origin and it happens to line up perfectly with the box joint. At this point, I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup to try to make things easier. First of all, in the component list, you'll see we have this component one that we really are interested in. If you left click on it and bring it out, you'll see it's just a blank board. We don't have any blank boards, so we'll hit escape. We'll right click on component one and we'll delete it. And now with this backboard, I'm, I'm going to change its shape just slightly. So I'll double click it to go into the edit mode, use the push pull tool. I'll grab this far edge, I'll push it in, and I'm going to type six into the distance. And that's basically going to make that a six inch board. So I'll go back to the space bar or select and move outside and click. And now I have this small backboard. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this backboard. I'll use spacebar to go to select and I'll left click to select the backboard. Then I'll use M for the move tool and Alt for copy. I'll grab this upper left corner and I'll move it to exactly this other corner and I'll left click. Now what I'd like to do is right click on this and flip along the component's green axis. And that'll basically butt it to the previous board. So use the spacebar to go back to select, right click on this board, say explode. Select the board next to it, right click and say explode. Now if you orbit around to something about like this and using the select tool, click outside and left click again and select just the middle of the board, it's gonna select just those three edges right there. Sorry, just the four edges. It's gonna select just the edges in the middle of the board. And what we can do is we can just press the backspace key to delete that joint. So now this is one board. Potentially we wanna call this one board the back board. So the backboard in our components list is only half of this, so we could right click on this and delete it. We don't need it anymore. We'll triple click this, type G to make a component, and then type backboard again, or whatever you'd like to call it. So now we have the backboard, which has fingers on both sides. So now all we need is another sideboard on the right. So we'll select the sideboard on the left. We we'll use the move tool with Alt or Option for copy, and we'll slide this over and snap it to the end of that other board. So now we have basically three boards. And we could make the fourth one with the fingers on the other end, but I'm not gonna go into that. I think what I'll do now is I'll put a bottom on this, which might seem kind of strange, but it at least shows another way to use the subtract tool. So using the rectangle tool, we'll start over here at one corner and come back across to this corner. And then when we finish that, it'll put a nice little rectangle bottom there. So we use the push-pull tool to pull it up, type 0.25, and we have a quarter inch bottom there. So we triple click that, press the G key, and I'll just call this box bottom. And now what I'd like to do is we'd like to set it into these three boards. So we'll double click this object and we'll use the push pull tool and we'll pull this edge out 0.25. 
We'll come around to this back, we'll pull this edge out, 0.25. We'll come around to this side, and we'll pull this edge out, 0.25. And now we'll click outside to deselect it. And now you can see that it's, it's overhanging slightly. And what we want to do is we want to move this board, and we could either grab it with the Move tool, and we grab this corner, and we start moving it on the blue axis. Now, see how it's not snapping to the blue axis very easily? So if we press the up arrow key, that snaps it to the blue axis. Now, we can either do it even with the bottom, or we could come down a quarter of an inch, and we can have a, an edge there, which I think we'll do. So the actual distance is from where this board started, which was a quarter of an inch above this. So we'll come to a quarter of an inch below it. So the length we want to drop down is a half, and the length box says half, so now we can left click. Now we have the bottom recessed into the three sides. And what we want to do now is we want to make the groove for that. Select the bottom, shift and select the side, and then use subtract. Now we need to bring the box bottom in again to do the other two. So click on the box bottom, and this is the hard part. So let's see, we can just kind of set it here, and then zoom in. And drop it there. That's where it was. So it's selected, so we use the space bar to get to select use shift to select the other side and use the subtract. One more time we bring a box bottom in we set it where it goes, go back to the space bar and the bottom is already selected as you can tell by the line back here hold the shift key select the back and use subtract and then one more time we can pull the box bottom in and set it in place and if we hide that you can see that there's a nice groove in all three boards. Okay, at this point we need to do some housekeeping. If you look in the component list, you'll see sideboard, backboard, and box bottom. But in the outliner, we only see box bottom, which means the sideboard and the backboard, those components aren't being used anymore. And the reason for this is because when we do a subtraction on a component, the result of the subtraction becomes a new group called difference. So the only one we have in the outliner is box bottom. So we can basically delete sideboard and backboard. So just right click and say delete, and right click and say delete. And now we need to clean up these differences and make them something coherent. If you click each one, you'll see this is the side, this is the other side, and this one is the back. So let's start with the back. So with the back selected, we right click and say explode. And now we tape G, and it's going to basically create a component out of that, which we didn't have before, we had a group. And I'm just going to go ahead and call this backboard again because that's what we used it for before. And the reason that you delete it from the component list is if you don't, it won't let you overwrite that. So now you'll see we have a backboard in the outliner and a backboard in the component list. So pick one of the other two differences, and that turns out to be this side. As it turns out, we don't need two components for this. We can just reuse the same one. And so we'll right click on this difference and say explode, and then type G, and we'll just call this the side board. So now we have one difference left and we don't really need it because we can just replicate the sideboard we have and move it over. So we'll select the other difference and we'll just delete it. Now what we'll do is we'll move copy this existing sideboard. So use M with Alt. Hold down the Shift key, constrain it to the end of the other board. Now you'll notice that the joint is not correct. But if we right click and say flip along components green, it'll flip it around the way we want it. So now we've basically used the sideboard twice, once for, once for each side. And by flipping this along the green axis, we've aligned it where it needs to be. 